just going to talk about leaf shutter lenses versus focal plane shutter. Um, a lot of people ask me which is the best and I'm just going to go through the different types of shutter um, and you can see what you think. You've also got electronic shutter now which is like your iPhone, your camera phone etc. So that's an electronic capture Well, that's just saying turn on the sensor, turn off the sensor. But with DSLRs and um, smaller compact cameras, you're going to get different shutters. So I've got the Fuji Film X10 there, and that's got a leaf shutter in it, which is a tiny little, very quiet shutter, which is ideal for weddings or churches or anywhere you need to be quite quiet. You notice on your DSLRs, you've got a focal plane shutter, which is a bit of a slap. They have improved over the years, but even the top-end professional cameras are still very noisy. So we'll just go through that and try to give you an idea of what I think and um, what I would go for. So this is just, a, just an enlarger lens, but I can show you in here that we've got some aperture blades. So those are your aperture blades, and they let in a certain amount of light. So let's go around. This is an f4 lens a 75 mil in larger lens so that means its largest aperture is f4 and its focal length is 75 mil so let's just look at the shutter now with a leaf shutter lens you'll have an aperture blade which is that one which sets the size of the aperture and then a very similar looking blade that will be inside which will just just cover so it's a a real sh it's a really quiet shutter that just it's like a well it is a leaf a petal it's it's a tiny weeny piece of plastic which just just covers that opening and then just opens and that's usually built within the lens so the x10 cameras like that that have got leaf shutters the x100 um, that's what the shutter is it's not clattering about because it's so small it's tiny and it just uncovers the lens and then covers it back up again within a fraction of a second. So if you set one second, it'll open, tick, and then close, tick. So that's, that shutter is, you know, in my opinion, one of the best shutters. We'll go into a lot of the advantages of leaf shutters um, towards the end, so stay till the end. Um, but that's all it is. It's just a tiny little piece of plastic or aluminium it covers that small opening at the back of the lens so it normally built built in behind the aperture blades um, sometimes in front you'll get that in compact cameras the next one we've got we'll push that one to the back is obviously that's a 5d classic now we can't look inside this one obviously so what i've done is i've got the film camera equivalent so let's open that up 200 film yeah good old film so that's a focal plane shutter in there and that's what you get in your DSLR so if you've got 30 D's 90 D's the whole of that range 5 D's all the Nikon's DSLR's you'll see this shutter over and over again and this one um, it creates a slot so it doesn't make an opening it actually creates a slot that travels so for a fraction of a second it will just be a traveling slot which does confuse some people it's almost like a swipe like um, an old tv would make the same sort of thing so and then when you get to shutter speeds like say half a second it will physically open completely for that whole second or half a second so it's a traveling slot when it's very fast shutter speeds top to bottom bottom to top um, and you'll see that if you get flash wrong because what will happen you'll have a black band at the top or bottom because you haven't got the flash synchronization right so this shutter is usually usually well it is always in the body of the camera it's one of the most popular shutters but not necessarily the best there's I think there's a very good reason they've kept with it um, but we'll go into that as we go along so a focal plane shutter is in the body and leaf shutters tend to be in the lenses or in compact cameras. So what's the difference between the two? 
physically, you've, that's all there is really. Um, they, some of the bodies will have focal plane shutters and have very small bodies, but you'll find that they go over to leaf. And you'll soon know if it's a leaf shutter because it'll be very quiet. So the next thing to look at is what are the advantages one of the, over the other. Now Hasselblad, if you wonder why their lenses cost so much, it's because they put their leaf shutters in their lenses and that the bodies are pretty plain and simple really. So to get those leaf shutters to all be the same in all the different lenses, um, A needs precision um, and maintenance. So one of the downsides to interchangeable lens, um, leaf shutter lenses, is actually from one lens to the next. If you have one lens that say it's firing at a 60th of a second and the next lens you change over to, is still you set a 60th, but it's actually doing a 40th because you haven't maintained it very well, then you get a difference in exposure. So having the focal plane shutter in the body meant that they didn't need to have the, the leaf lenses, um, leaf shutter lenses. So the body, you, you're basically maintaining one thing and that's the body. So that's a downside to leaf. Um, but at the end of the day, when you get a compact body like this, you never take the lens off. It's not interchangeable, it's just a zoom lens. You've, you've done away with that really. There's one leaf for the whole focal range. Um, so that's done away with. So there you go. So that's one thing to think about when you're choosing these things. Um, the next thing to think about is flash. Now, as I mentioned with focal plane, you have to get something called the flash synchronization speed right to use flash at its desired power. So if you look at an average manual flash gun goes from full power down to, um, say we go down to an eighth power working at a wedding, um, then we've got to synchronize the focal plane shutter with the 5D Mark I at one two hundredth of a second or below. So if you go above one two hundredth of a second on the 5D Classic, then you're going to get a black band. So you can't shoot at shutter speeds above one two hundredth of a second. Other cameras, it's one two fiftieth. Um, what was common on old film cameras was a sixtieth of a second. You couldn't go above a sixtieth or one two five. So just bear that in mind that with flash, it's, 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 it's tricky because you go outside, maybe I don't shoot fully in flash, but if you do, you can't get above this one two hundredth. So what you need is then a very fancy flash gun. And that flash gun will act like a torch rather than the flash. And it will leave that flashlight on for a, a very long time. But unfortunately, you use a lot of power. So then you're fighting it, you see. So you've got a focal plane shutter and you're trying to put a lot of power out. But you can't put a lot of power out because it's turned into a torch um, and not into a flash. But, you know, that's one to look into. That's, that's the overview of what's wrong with the focal plane shutter and flash. It's a real problem. Um, we're always fighting that one, trying to get a bigger flash gun. Um, and that's a problem. Or you're stacking up your flashes. So you will see a lot of people might use uh, three, um, three flashes um, and an umbrella or a softbox um, outside. And that's because they're trying to overcome this problem. They're trying to get to a 4,000th of a second F2, say, to have a blurry background. Um, and a nice fast shutter speed to get the exposure right. But unfortunately, that means they lose all the power. So that's massive. Uh, with flash, I'd much prefer a nice leaf lens. Now a leaf lens will synchronize at all shutter speeds, which is incredible. So this in manual mode will go to a 4,000th of a second. My G10 will as well. Um, so with a leaf shutter, um, when the flash goes off, at, your desired power, whatever you set, then you're not losing anything. So this is a big advantage to the leaf shutter. So if I had to say one thing um, is why haven't they got leaf shutters on DSLRs so much? Well, when it used to be film cameras in a range of lenses, and it's still probably the case if you look, um, you'll help, you, you would always get a leaf shutter in there uh, for portrait photographers. But you don't see that so much anymore. So yeah, it's a real problem. 
So that's the leaf. So the leaf is mainly very, very quiet and extremely good for flash. The focal plane shutter is relatively inexpensive because you've only got one um, shutter in the camera and then the lenses become cheaper relatively. I know the L series Canons, people don't seem to think they're very cheap, but that's what you're looking at. So the lenses would be, believe it or not, a lot more expensive. They had to put a leaf shutter in every lens and have it synchronized across their range of lenses. Um, that's going to be expensive. So then they brought in the electronic shutter, which everyone thought was going to be the best thing, <coughs> including myself. Um, so electronic shutter is literally turn the sensor on, turn it off again. Unfortunately, with flash, it all goes wrong again because it doesn't work. So electronic shutters and flash doesn't work. So getting to the bottom of it, really, the best shutter, in my opinion, is the leaf shutter. Comment below if you disagree, but leaf shutters are nice and quiet, so you don't need an electronic shutter. They just, you can't hear them, really. Tiny little tick in your ear as you take the photo, your subject won't hear it. Um, flash synchronization at all speeds so that you can go outside and do fill in flash at a four thousandth of a second. Um, use the X100, use the X10. Um, so extremely good. Focal plane shutter <clears throat> is a problem with flash. So comment below, that's just a short one, just to get you into the differences between leaf shutters and focal plane shutters. I'll try and do a, a little bit more on this because everyone's, everyone's got an opinion. Um, I'm using an iPhone SE to record this and that will have an electronic shutter. So it's really important to learn which one works best for you. I personally am moving over to smaller cameras now. Um, as much as I love my 5D Mark I, it's all getting a bit too heavy. So I'm trying to replace it. So I'm trying to use my mini 5D Mark I here, which is the X10. I'm gonna put it through its paces against the 5D Mark I. And you'll see that you're getting a very good result out of this camera. And you're getting a very quiet camera and you can buy 25 pound flash guns, pop the little flash up and synchronize your flash, very fast shutter speeds. So I hope that helps, gets you thinking about the differences between the two. Don't just choose one because everybody else is choosing it. You've got to think about what you're going to photograph. Fill in flash outside, look at leaf shutter. Okay, so hope you subscribe. Um, hit the like button if this helps you. That would. Uh, it helps me to look at what you're liking and so I can make more videos about it and um, I'll get more to you soon. Thanks a lot.